Okay, a child throws a ball upward off a cliff from a height of 240 feet above sea level. The height h of the ball above the water in feet at any time t in seconds can be modeled by the equation h is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 32 t plus 240. So we're gonna answer a, when will the height of the ball be 240 feet above sea level? So the first thing we want to do here is we want to rewrite our equation h is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 332 t plus 240 and we're going to replace our h our height with what do you think with 240 feet so 240 feet is going to go in place of h because that's what we're looking for So when you have a polynomial equation, what's the first thing you want to do to solve this polynomial equation? Okay, there is definitely a GCF, but there's something we have to do before that, and we don't want to forget zero? this on the test. We need to set it equal to zero, because we have to use the zero product property in order to be able to solve a polynomial equation. So let's set it equal to zero. We're going to subtract 240 from both sides. And I'll write that step right here one more time, just in case anybody forgot it. Step one, set equation equal to zero. Zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 32 t and that's going to give me plus zero, so you know what, I'm not even going to write plus zero. I'm just going to leave the polynomial there as negative 16 t squared plus 32 t. What's the next step? Uh, GCF. GCF. What is the GCF of this polynomial? Sixteen. And something else is there that I can factor out? A t. I'm going to also factor out a negative because whenever my leading term, the one with the highest degree is negative in the front, for some reason I just feel a little bit uncomfortable about that. I always feel more comfortable when my leading term is positive. So I'm going to factor out a negative 16t. And now, what do we do next? This will be step three. We're gonna set each factor equal to zero. Set each factor <coughs> equal to zero. Bless, bless you. Bless you. So now we're going to go negative 16 equal to zero, t equal to zero, t minus 2 equal to zero, and solve each one. The first one has no solution, so I'm not even going to worry about that one. The second one says t equal to zero. That's good. We can use that. And this next one is going to be t equal to two. Now, I'm not going to give you full credit if you just write t equal to zero and t equal to two, because I'm going to say, I don't know what that means. I don't know what t equal to zero means, t equal to two means. I don't know what units those are. What units are you talking about? So how should we rewrite this? Remember, it's a, it's a word problem. I want you to give me a sentence explaining to me the answer. Um. 
All right, I like that. So Amber said the ball will be at 240 feet at zero seconds and two seconds. So when is it going to be at zero? Oh, we'll be throwing it? Yes. And then it right, right when the ball is leaving the boy's hand, it will be at zero seconds. And then after it goes up and starts coming back down, after two seconds, it will be at 240 feet again. That's it. These are way nicer than the ones where these both ones are nicer than the other ones. The other ones? Okay, well then that's, that's good to know. All right, we're not done with this one. There's a part B. The part B, let me go back to the question so we can see what it said. It says, when will the ball strike the water? So what will the, what will the height of the ball be when it strikes the water? Zero feet above sea level. So the ball will be zero feet above sea level. So what do you think you're going to substitute instead of H? Zero. All right, that's all you have to do for B. Sub Wait, I don't get it. When will the ball strike the water? So I'm looking at this point, this moment in time when it's going to hit the water. What will the height of the ball be when it strikes the water? How high above sea level would it be when it touches oh, so the water? We plug in a zero for H because it's going to be zero feet above sea level because it's touching the water. Oh. So and what, we do the same process. We do the same process, exactly the same. So let's go ahead and do that. Hey, but then our answer for A was the feet. What would the height of the body is uh, zero seconds and two, zero seconds and two seconds? Zero seconds and two seconds. There's two answers. For A. Okay, so now we're going to do problem B. B is asking, when will the ball strike the water? When will the ball be zero feet above sea level? When it's striking the water. So our original equation was H is equal to negative 16 T squared plus 32 T plus 240, and I'm going to replace H with what? Zero. Zero. Everybody here knows how to solve this now. You can work ahead and, and get the answer before me. If you're not sure what I'm, you know, what you're doing, then follow along with me and, and ask me questions. So then I'm ready to factor. I'm going to factor out the GCF first. To find the GCF, I'm just going to quickly find the prime factorizations here of the coefficients of the variables 2, 2, 2, 2 and 240 is 24 times 10 and that's 8 times 3 and that's 2, 2, 2 I'm doing the prime factor oops, I crossed out the 3 I'm doing the prime factorizations of the coefficients to find the GCF. So then I go and I look to see what do they all have in common? They all have in common at least four factors of two. So that's my GCF. What does four factors of two multiply to? No. 16. 16 is my GCF. I'm going to factor out a 16 and I'm not just going to factor out a 16. I'm going to factor out a negative 16 because I like my leading term of my polynomial when I'm factoring to be positive. So I'm going to write 0 is equal to negative 16 factored out. What's going to be left over? t squared minus 2t. Good. My Oh, minus good, minus 15. I tried to trick you guys there, but you weren't tricked. Good. So now we're going to factor this out. What are two numbers that give me negative 15 if I multiply and negative 2 if I add? Five and three. Which one's negative? The five. All right. Let me insert some more space here. 
I know I'm going to, uh, I got this negative 16, that's part of the factors here, but I don't want to worry about it, so I'm just going to write it down here so I don't forget about it. I'm going to focus on just the polynomial here. So t squared plus 3t minus 5t minus 15. But you're not allowed to have a minus in the middle when we do factoring by grouping. All right? So I'm going to rewrite that minus as plus a negative. Now I'm going to do factoring by grouping. What can we factor out of the first two terms? A t. Is that zero? Is that part of our answer? That zero oh, is... Oh, it's h. Okay. It's, it's representing our height h, and I, I haven't copied it down, but I'm going to copy it down in this last step. I'm just kind of focusing on the factoring right now. Uh, what can we factor out of the second two terms? A negative 5. And now I'm going to factor out a t plus 3. And I'll be left with a t minus 5. So I'm going to write my 16 right next to this. And this is all set equal. Oh, that was a negative 16. Negative 16. And that's all equal to 0. I'm ready to set each factor equal to 0. Negative 16 equal to 0. t plus 3 equal to 0. t minus 5 equal to 0. And I'm going to solve each one. The first one has no solution, so I'm not even going to worry about that one. The next one does have a solution. But let's think about this. It's telling me t is equal to negative 3. Can time be negative? This answer doesn't even make sense. So we're going to have to exclude this answer because sometimes when we use algebra to solve word problems, sometimes it gives us answers that they mean something in the algebra, but in real life it just doesn't make sense and we need to exclude those answers. So I'm not going to include that as part of my solution set for this real life problem here. Yes. And then I got t equal to 5, and that one looks good. That one makes sense. So let me make, give a little explanation here for this one. Time cannot be negative. So you need to exclude right, this possible answer. Do not include it as part of your answer. So the only answer we can use is the t equal to 5. So at 5 seconds, the ball will strike the water.